Hey everyone, how is it going? So today we're having a little look at one of my very favourite gambits. It's the England Gambit. This is one of those where when it works, it's just, ah, oh, it's a really great feeling, man. As always, if there's anything you want to see, just ping it down in the comment section below and I'll try my best to cover it. It doesn't have to be openings, which I know is mainly what I've been doing, but if you want to see, I don't know, endgame things, strategy theories, game reviews, whatever, just let me know and like I say, I'll try to cover it for you and do your little shout out on top. Way. Um, right, anyway, let's just jump right into it. So the England Gambit starts as a response to D4 and that is e5. So you can see right off the bat Stockfish isn't a huge fan of it but it's a gambit. Stockfish never likes gambits. What we are hoping is that they go ahead and capture. I mean if you're playing like a bullet game you may just see them already pre-move the bishop to there which you see a shocking amount. If you do that it's no longer the England it's just you going ahead and winning the game. But what we're hoping like I say is they come and capture like so. Now we've just lost a pawn so the first thing you want to do is to attack that pawn. So get your little horsey into play and just plop it here on the c6 directly attacking that pawn. Now you'll normally find white coming out and just adding the extra layer of defense on and they get their little horse out to the f3. So we have this kind of battle going on and we just want to carry on piling on the pressure. So get your queen into action. Now we have two, four, white's one. Now from here, the most common move that you're going to see from white is them trying to add in the extra defender and this is exactly what we want. So we're coming out with the bishop and putting it on the f4. Now about 30 to 40 percent, I think it's 38 percent of players, go ahead and do this. And this has a 60 percent win ratio for black. What we're going to do, grab the queen and come across, put white straight in a check. And you can see from here, we've got the check going on. We're now attacking this bishop and we're also attacking this pawn here. White is in a lot of trouble. Ignore Stockfish. Obviously, people who are well versed in the England, they're going to know a bit more of what to do. But here we are looking at the ideal scenario. Now, White starts getting a little bit antsy, realized mm, maybe I've done goofed up. So they leave the defense of the pawn, bring the bishop back. Keep the king nice and safe, but also pile on a little bit of pressure towards your queen. Well, we already know that this pawn's left undefended, so we'll just swoop right up and take it. We were minus one in material, but now we're nice and even on the material scale. Again, Stockfish isn't loving life, but what does Stockfish know? Nothing, I tells you. There's a right way for white to play. Ooh, did a little rhyme. And there's a wrong way for white to play. Now, the right way would be them coming out with a horsey to the c3 there. We now can't capture the horse because of the bishop, can't take the rook because of the queen. And white's now very well developed and we're just not really. But, I mean, we'll have a little look at this in a second and what to do. But what we want to see is them falling right into our cunning trap. Moo ha ha. And that's them coming out with the bishop. And while it does look like it makes sense, and according to the Lee Chess database, nearly 500,000 players thought this was the best thing to do, have a little look at the analysis bar. It's just warp, 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 sad trombone noises. It's, oh, things are going to get slightly uncomfortable for white. What we're going to do is we're going to get our bishop and we're just going to shimmy it right across here to the b4. This move is absolutely brutal. Now he can't go ahead and take our queen because of the pin and he's relatively limited in what he can now do. Uh, if he comes with the queen to add in the extra layer of support, we then take. And if he just say captures with the horsey, then clearly we're just going to take the rook like so. If he comes back there with the queen, then we can just capture again. And yeah, we're in for a pretty good time. Um, alternatively, if he blocks with the horsey on the D1, come across with your other horse, capture the pawn, and if he takes, we can just shoot back. And we're in a very, very comfortable position, plus six ahead, and white really should just resign. But why doesn't he just go ahead and capture with the queen? Because you can see, I mean, we can't take the rook because the queen's defending it. We can't take the horsey because the rook's defending it. We can't take the queen because the horsey's defending it. 
Well, we can just slip right back here to C1 and checkmate. There is nothing Wise can do about it. And that's a checkmate in like, what, eight moves? It is brilliant, and you'd be surprised at how many people fall for this. Now, let's just rewind a little way, like so. So, we've come across and we've put him in check. If he blocks with the knight, then clearly we're just going to go right away across and we're just going to take the bishop. And yeah, we're in for a pretty good time. We will be looking at capturing this. If he comes down, then we can just capture back. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a nice time from here. We're plus two ahead, and yeah, we're pretty well developed. I mean, look at Stockfish. Stockfish is loving life right now for Black. You may also see them come down and block you like so. If they do, again, you just come across with the queen, take that bishop. If they do come down to here. They have, obviously, this kind of fork going on. Don't worry yourself too much. Slide across here to the E4. Let them take. Don't worry about this position. Just move your king across to the D8. Let them take. We can then just come up, take back that pawn. He captures. We take back. And just have a little look at this little horsey. He isn't going anywhere. He can't get out of there. Yes, why is it a three-point material advantage? But according to Stockfish, we are 1.1 ahead. Yes, like I say, we've lost our castle and opportunities, but we have a very, very active king. And white is not developed at all. We're in for a really good time. Now, let's just bring it back to... Where are you? This position here. Um, Right, so, as before, white comes across with the bishop to attack us like so. We go and we capture that pawn. Now, like I say, the wrong move before was for them to come across with the bishop like so, and that just leads to a completely winning position for black. However, the right move is for them to come out with the horsey to the c3. But there's a couple of things we can do in this position. We could come up with the horsey to the b4 like so, and if they do something like try to threaten you, then we are in for an absolutely wonderful time because we can just capture like so. Now look at this position, there is nothing white can do apart from capture like so. We swing across and we grab their queen. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But let's just say white sees that and they come across and try to block. Well, all we have to do is capture like so. They come across and then we can take. And we're in a fairly comfortable position. Stockfish says white has a slight advantage, but it's not too much, and, you know, we're not going to have a terrible time. Alternatively, what you can do is... Ooh, let me just find the position. There we are. Uh, we can get the bishop and come across to here, to the b4. Now, you may see them come down with the horsey, looking at trying to get this fork on the go. First thing you need to do is to pop him in check like so. Now, he's not going to capture with a queen. If he does, then boom. We are in for a wonderful time once again. Um, more than likely, what you'll see is him come back with the horse. Now, we again, we need to be aware of this. Just shimmy your king across and protect that pawn on the c7. If from here he starts launching a bit more of attack, starts getting his other horse in play, attacking you, that's all right. Just bring it down to here on the b5, sort of attacking both of them. What you'll find is he'll want to open up his bishop and protect both of these. So pushing forward the pawn to the e4 makes the most sense there. Well, bring up your other horsey just to get that into play. Pop it here on the e7. So we're kind of building up a little bit of attack here. And if he does go ahead and takes it, shimmy up, put him in check. If he blocks, then we just come right back down. We can look at, you know, capturing this in a bit. But the main thing is we're in a fairly comfortable position here. We probably need to start looking at trying to get this bishop out as well. So, I don't know, maybe pushing like that, something with a little fian kettle. And um, just try and work something out there. And just bringing it back to this position. So he goes with that. We take. He comes across like so. We come up with the bishop, and then he comes across this time with the rook to the b1. Best thing you can do from here is to just get your queen out of the way. So just come across to here on the a3. And nine times out of ten, what you're going to find is them coming across with the knight to here, to the d5. 
and what they're looking at doing again is just going for this fork. This is something that you're going to see very, very often. From here, I would just bring the bishop back. I wouldn't go ahead and capture, just bring it back like so. Protect, oh dear, protect the pawn on the c7. If he does go ahead and take, we can just shimmy straight on down, put him in check, and you're going to find him do something like, I mean, you may see him push forward the c3 pawn, you may see him come back with the horsey like so. I mean, if he does that, then boom, we've just gone right ahead and won that back. But you do see it from time to time. Best move really is going to be pushing forward the pawn the c3. Or you may see him just try to block with the queen. If he does block with the queen, I would just I'd just go ahead and take trade queens and then just move your king across. Just protect him there. And relatively even game from here on out. Now, Stockfish recommends this is the best move, the Rook to the B5. I don't I don't see anyone actually playing this, but I mean, they may do potentially. If they do, then just go ahead, um, trade off your bishops like so, um, and then just, again, just move your king across, just protect him there. And later on, we can just look at just trying to kick him out of the way there. But Let's be honest, I don't, I really can't see anyone coming across with this rook. Um, it's just, it's a very, it's a very computer move. Anyway, that is the England Gambit. I hope it was helpful. Honestly, it's really, really good fun. And there's just so many cool little traps and things. Uh, it's it's really, really fun to play. And a lot of lower level players are going to fall for these traps. Even some intermediate players, a lot of intermediate players fall for the same traps. So yeah, go off and just practice, practice, practice it. It's really, really good fun. It's well worth having in your repertoire. As always, if you like it, then, you know, please drop it a like. If you really like it, please subscribe. Really helps the channel grow. And like I say, if there's anything kind of chess related you want me to cover, just let me know in the comments section. It doesn't have to be openings. It could be anything chess related. Because it'd just be fun to go off and just try some new bits and bobs with the channel. And, uh, you know, we can all grow together. Um, but right, I'm going to get away now. So you guys go off, have some fun, and you play some chess. I'll catch you dudes later.